am Kiana Conley Aquino. I'm the Senior Executive Director for the LA Chapter, and you're here with me today at another Conversations Grammys Bridges the Gaps taping. Thanks for joining us. Yay! Yes, we are here with our amazing Los Angeles Chapter live member audience. A shout out to them. And today's participants, as well as our audience, are made up of your peers. So we have Grammy nominees and Grammy winners. We have new members from the class of 2023 and beyond. We have Los Angeles Chapter board leaders, next alumni, Grammy U members, and basically everything we know and love about our wonderful LA Chapter membership. You're represented here today, whether you're a music business giant or an indie creator, you're here, you're welcome. So what we're doing today um, actually is a conversation that's all about our music community. It's built on discussion that we were having in our producers and engineer wing committee meetings, our songwriter composer wing committee meetings, our professional development committee meetings. These are the topics that we know were important to you. Um, things that you've been talking about in your studios, at your lunch meetings and compelling social media commentary. We are bringing these conversations to together today. So it's a forum that we're hoping that anyone in our Grammy family can have an impactful voice in, that you can share your knowledgeable perspective and be a bridge in your community while engaging your music business locally and now through social media beyond. So we hope that you will find these conversations engaging, informative and reflective of your voice as well. And for those um, of our music community of creators and professionals, we thank you for contributing. But before I introduce our moderator and panelists for today, I'd like to thank our amazing partners, 1500 or nothing. And of course, yeah, I love that. Hand clap for 1500 or nothing, doing the good work. <laughs> um, here at 1500 Sound Academy and Volume Studios, this is the home of 1500 or nothing. And they're allowing us to host our event in their wonderful facility today. So also a big shout out to the wings of producers and engineers, of songwriters and composers, and the Department of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, for the Black Music Collective's contribution and support in branding this event. So we'll kick off this conversation. Today's conversation is called Sustain and Maintain, Music, Family, and Wellness. Our moderator for today is Julie Pilot. She was currently the Chief Growth Officer at FYI. It's an award-winning music media, and she herself, sorry, is an award-winning music media and digital entertainment executive. She has a background of eight years as a key global executive at Apple Music. Um, she was a Billboard Women in Music honoree, and today she works with a con as a consultant and a partner with established companies, public agencies, and startups. Yay for Julie. Okay. <laughs> Also on the panel today, we have Candace Newman. She is the CEO and founder of Live Out Live, a boutique touring and bo um, booking agency and nonprofit dedicated to encouraging marginalized teens and young adults to pursue careers in live entertainment. Live Out Live is forging the path to bring better representation to the music industry while helping others discover their own passion and purpose. Thanks, Candace. All right, so next on our panel, we have Orly Marley. She is a successful entrepreneur, filmmaker, music manager, and executive producer. She initially got her start at WME as the director of talent sponsorships, and she closed a number of worldwide endorsement and sponsorship deals for A-list music acts and actors, including Enrique Iglesias, Black Eyed Peas, Salma Hayek, Ray Charles, Queen Latifah, Willie Nelson, and many more. Currently managing her husband, Emmy, and eight-time Grammy-winning reggae icon, Ziggy Marley, and together they have built an amazing record label, publishing company, and more, Tough Gong Worldwide. They also have their publishing entity, Ishti Music, and they've accomplished this vision of making Ziggy a very successful, fully independent artist. She's also the recent executive producer for Bob Marley, One Love, which is now the fifth highest-grossing music biopic of all time. Orly. Thank you, Orly. Next on our panel, we have Michelle Lewis, who is an award-winning songwriter and composer, a highly influential music creator's rights advocate as executive director of Songwriters of North America. For more than two decades, she has written charting singles for a diverse array of artists from Amy Grant and Cher to Little Mix and Andre Day. She's Emmy nominated, and she's been recognized in creating music for the Disney Junior show, Doc McStuffins. 
Thank you, Michelle Lewis. <laughs> and last but not least, we also have on the panel today, PJ Vegas. PJ is a multi-award winning singer, songwriter, and composer. His awards include an MTV VMA for Best Video for Good in 2017, Native American Music Awards for Best Independent Single in 2019, International Indigenous Hip Hop Awards for Music Video of the Year and R&B Single of the Year in 2021. Thank you, PJ Vegas. And I know I said that was the last, but there's actually one more. <laughs> Ifunanya Nweke is the founder and executive director of an innovative and award-winning 501c3 nonprofit organization called Jazz Hands for Autism. Jazz Hands for Autism provides tech-enabled avenues for success for neurodivergent musicians. Thank you, Ifunanya, for being on our panel as well. All right, so we're gonna have a great conversation and now I'll hand it off to Julie to get us started. Thanks so much, Kiana. I'm really so happy to be here today with the Recording Academy and chapter members for a really important conversation because when you think about the music industry and the Recording Academy, everyone's always hustling to, um, you know, race to make the best record, you know, have the biggest success. And the fact that we're taking the time today to talk about mental health and family and music and something really real with people, some of which who are like family and some of which are new friends. I think it's really an honor and a privilege to have this conversation today. So, um, you know, the, the panel, I think, is titled uh, Sustain and Maintain. But my goal is not to just sustain and maintain. I want us to thrive and grow. Um, and I think the only way we can do that is by sharing our stories and being really honest. I remember in the pandemic, there was a social media question um, where that was going around that was like, how are you, really? And so, you know, just as a little form of introduction, you know, I'd love to go down the line and check in. Full disclosure, I got here and Orly and I already cried once. <laughs> but no, I just would love to hear what's happening in your lives and how are you? You know, let, let's start with you. Um, I'm well. Um, grateful, I think, is the best word to describe how I'm doing today. I'm grateful to be here amongst my peers. I'm grateful for this conversation. If I start crying, don't be alarmed. I cry very easily. Um, but I'm very grateful. Um, and I'm grateful to feel grateful because that's not always the case. So, yeah. I cry when I get tired, too. Uh, you know, so it might be. Um, I feel good. I'm happy and Really pleased to be here. I'm glad I made it on time and we're all here together. So good. It's a good day. I had my coffee, you know, okay, all good. Amazing. And I cried already. So. Yep. Got a doubt. <laughs> I am doing fantastic. I'm so excited to be here and to share and to be amongst my peers. Um, I woke up this morning, so I'm extremely blessed and grateful. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a bit tired this morning. <laughs> I had a long night with my two-year-old son last night. Um, but, you know, it's moments like that that really show me how blessed I am and how grateful I am to actually be doing stuff like this and be able to set an example for the younger ones. So at this very moment, I feel inspired and I feel good. Hey, Michelle. Uh, there you go. Thank you. I'll share that with you. Well, I'm the one that was a half hour late to a 45-minute panel, so that's how I am. Um, but you're so magnificent all of the time that we wanted that, you to be here. We're so thankful well, you made I, it. I so appreciate that. I was thinking in the car, like, oh my God, I am that person. And but but it really like it's LA in traffic, and and I have to remember like the important thing. That's a, a reset moment where like the important thing is like I'm okay. They, you know they know I'm gonna get there, and you'll love me anyway. So. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm curious. I just want to, I mentioned that was a social media question happening during the pandemic. Um, and I just want to say, I'm, I'm so curious to hear how people have adjusted post-COVID. Like, are things normal? 
Um, you know, do you work from home? Do you work in an office? Do you go out as much as you used to? Um, I'm going to ask who I know has more of a corporate life. I mean, you run an office, Orly. So I, I found that we spent a lot of the pandemic planning. Mm. It was like a lot of like intro and sort of like thinking about what the next chapter will be like because I I really was thinking it can't stay like this forever right we can't just stay in our in our homes forever this is crazy so what is what's it gonna look like what's the next step for us um so for us personally um we are still working from home although it's different now because my house has become my office um, we sort of shut down our office and we're in construction on a new space close to my house. So like thinking about how long are you driving has definitely been a thing. Like I look at my time differently and I think of it like an attorney, right? Which I'm not, but they build their time, right? Every hour is a certain amount. I think about that more and more post COVID. I think about how do I spend my day? Are we driving 30 minutes to an office or do we find a space six minutes away? And what does that space look like? What can we do out of it to monetize it differently? So um, those things have really sort of taken for us. Um, so within six months, we'll have a new space, literally six minutes from my house. And it'll be a very different experience because there'll be other things happening there than just an office space. Ooh, congratulations. I can't wait. But what a great reset of priorities. Yeah, thinking about your life. Michelle, how about you? I feel like we need to be talking about this more because um, the pandemic kind of broke people in a way that it sort of maybe you didn't realize it at the time. Um, but being, I, I'm a I have a teenager, I have a teenage son and he was, you know, locked on Zoom school and locked down during seventh and eighth grade. And now he's in high school and he's, he's a junior in high school. And so many of his friends, him included, like social anxiety is, is like through the roof for him and his cohort. And, um, and so it's one thing, you know, to realize like, they, okay, they went through these like Fair. You'd think it would be good to be in social isolation during middle school, but um, I mean, those have been my years that I would have chosen. But um, but he, he, you know, I think it bro broke a lot of his friends, and and then I also think like maybe it broke us too. Maybe we're, even though we're a little more, we've got a few more years of social development behind us. In ways, we lost um, the muscle. Uh, like we atrophied a little bit of how to deal with one another in person. And I think we should give each other space for that. Like allow, like I think we need to have a lot more patience with each other for, for messing up because I think it affected us in ways that we are socially and emotionally that we're just kind of understanding and grappling with now. It's easier to see it in younger people Older people, we think we'd be fine, but maybe we're not. Yeah, that's an interesting point. And Candice, you work with young people, right? What have you seen post-pandemic, especially in live events, right, as you're going back, both personally and with the work you do? Um, how's the adjustment been? Um, for me, I was... I'm, I was listening to both Orly and Michelle's answers and kind of drawing from both of them because I do, both answers resonate with me, but personally it was an opportunity for um, forward thinking transitions and, um, and really figuring out and carving out what I wanted my future to, to look like and how I wanted to impact people differently than I was impacting them or having those meaningful relationships with them pre-pandemic and how I wanted those relationships. So it was kind of a reset, as someone mentioned, um, but an opportunity to kind of determine and dictate what I wanted my destiny to be post-pandemic. So it has been really great for me. I, I feel like it was a, an opportunity to um, transition because I transitioned during that time from corporate America, where it, which I had worked in long term my entire career into entrepreneurship so it allowed me to really strategize and determine how I wanted my business and my future and my career 
which direction I wanted to go into. And then again, because I work with youth, what I wanted that meaningful impact impact to look like from then on. So um, it was like a, a clean, clear slate for me to, you know, create a new secession plan for what I thought my life was going to be, right? I was so conditioned to be in this corporate space and do things in a certain structure, but it allowed me to create a new infrastructure for myself and for the people that I have relationships with in the community that I was looking to build. So it's been so great and so meaningful for me. Amazing. And um, PJ and Ufananya, uh, how about how you're working? I mean, what's the balance of in real life versus I don't know how many more Zoom meetings I can take. I really try not to, especially my limit is no no meetings over eight people on virtual conference. It's just it's a wash. Yeah. It's it's definitely a learning experience because you come from an uh an era and a vibe where, I mean, at least I do, where everything's personal. It's face-to-face. -face. You're picking up someone's energy. You're able to have a conversation with them and really pick their brain. But I feel like everything was so kind of technical for a while during the pandemic, and it kind of threw a lot of, of the feeling of the music and the creation off for me, at least. Um, I love being in a room with artists, working with people, catching the vibe. And when all that kind of shut off, it kind of threw off my whole creative process. So I kind of dug into myself and just focused a lot, like Candace and all of them were saying, was just on preparation for when all this ended. You know what I mean? Because I, I saw it as a point, as an opportunity to just get better. You know what I mean? Um, but mental health did play a big part in that because you're locked in your house for like 24 hours a day. So how do you create when you're feeling trapped in, in in a box you know what I mean so it was just dealing with that on a day-to-day -day and um just trying to be inspired by things that <laughs> you you see online or anything like that and just draw inspiration from anywhere that's usually how I got through my days was just trying to draw inspiration um I resonate with all the responses that have been given so far the pandemic for me personally I mean I like to spend a lot of time alone <laughs> So I was having a blast, you know, I was painting, I was, you know, I was doing all these creative pursuits that I, that I, I, I generally don't have a lot of time for. Um, so for me, on a personal note, um, I took, I really enjoyed the rest that came with the pandemic. Although, you know, the pandemic came with a lot of negative things, I think it also came with some positive things. And for me, one of those things was, was rest. Also on the same note, I think that it's important to mention that, you know, my work, I work with people who are neurodivergent and the pandemic has had two kind of like a, uh, what's the word? Two effects to, to, a, to a degree. On one hand, it actually created a lot more lines for communication. So for people who may have social anxiety in public spaces, being on Zoom actually was very, very helpful. So being able to learn on Zoom or perform on Zoom was helpful. Some of our musicians were able to perform for people in Ireland, you know, so they wouldn't have never gotten that opportunity had it been uh, had it not been for, you know, Zoom or, or virtual performances. So um, there was a lot of expansion and innovation that happened within my organization. We were able to go from just working with people um, locally to being able to work, work with people across the nation. So we have, you know, musicians that we work with in New York, in Chicago, um, you know, in Maryland. So um, on, on, a, on a professional side um, and on my work side, it created a lot, a lot of opportunity. On the, sa on the same token, there is something called Zoom fatigue, you know, and so so on one hand, while it, it create more opportunities, too much of the same thing all the time can create can create some challenges. So there has been Zoom fatigue, even for me as a person. Um, Zoom meetings, I have them a lot, but I wish I didn't have so many Zoom meetings. Um, and I think also having so many Zoom meetings back to back also helps you think of your time differently because before you can have 30 minutes, you know, between um, two meetings, but now it's like, oh, five minutes because it's just on Zoom, right? But that also contributes to the Zoom fatigue. So I think it's a, it's a mixed bag, uh, at least in my experience. There have been some positive elements, you know, like rest for me and also um, being able to reach more musicians who are neurodivergent in more places. And then also Zoom fatigue has been a challenge as well. Will you take just a minute and tell me a little bit more about your organization? Uh, just with everybody on the panel, it's the organization I'm the least familiar with. So I'd love to understand how we can champion you. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so Jazz Hands, we uh, work with neurodivergent musicians. Um, many, many musicians tend to actually be neurodivergent. That's a completely side story, but many people are undiagnosed. Um, but people who are neurodivergent, especially people with autism, may have great talent, they may have great knowledge of music, but they may need additional support. Um, sen you know, having sensory friendly rooms, teaching music in a specific kind of cadence and making it more individualized, that's what Jazz Hands does. So we provide music education for neurodivergent musicians who need additional support. 
And then we help connect them to different opportunities in their community where they can perform and share their musical, their musicality with their communities. So um, that could be either performing on stage. You know, our musicians have performed everywhere for, for the city of Culver City to ex-mayors or current mayors. Uh, our musicians have also, you know, created original music that is um, pitched for different purposes through our music library, where we have the first music library that uh, that holds music exclusively exclusively uh, composed or written by neurodivergent songwriters, composers, etc. Um, there is a, a large group of artists that have the talent, they have the motivation, they have the zeal, but they don't have the opportunity or the support. And so that's why Jazz Hands exists, to be able to create those opportunities, those avenues, and provide the support that they need. That's amazing. Fascinating. And uh, I can't wait to hear even more. Um, I would love to hear about how, um, two-part question, <laughs> we have so many different things that define us, right? Nobody's just one thing. You know, I, if I go to a party, I never, ever, ever ask somebody, well, what do you do? Never. It's a golden rule for me. Um, maybe I'll say what's going on in your life or something like that because we're not defined by our jobs necessarily. You know, I think that there's so many other things that are important, whether it's our family, our friends, our passions, our nonprofit work, our own health. I'd be really curious um, to hear um, what your top priorities are in your life and how you try to find that magical word of balance. I feel like Candace is smirking. Like, <laughs> I, like she am I the secret? <laughs> I'm just smirky. Um, my priorities involve, I'm a mom. That's my number one priority um, beyond myself and taking care of myself in this world and how I move and navigate as um, Candace and, you know, my wealth and my health and my wellness is a top priority for me. But um, I'm a mom, which I'm very proud of. I'm a mom in music. And Go ahead and shout out the babies. How old Shout are out to my son, Ezra, who is 13 and graduating from middle school on Monday. Nice. Thank you. Very exciting for him. Um, so we're going through a lot of transitions, but um, fun and exciting ones. And um, beyond that, you know, I'm a mom. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I have a lot of people. I'm a mentor. A lot of people who look up to me. And um, and again, my number one priority is to make sure that I am whole so that I can pour into other people's cups. So, you know. And how do you do that? How do you prioritize being whole? Um, like I said, my, my wellness and my health is number one priority for me. So I work out regularly, several times a week. I hit the gym. My son's like, mom, you're always coming home complaining that you're hurting. Why are you going back? Yeah. It's really I unfair. I said, because it right? hurts so good. <laughs> I feel like if you do that work, you should feel better, not just be crippled. Yeah. I feel great. Um, I feel great going and I'm showing up for myself. You know, it, it's tough because I'm like, why do I, why do I do, do this to myself when I'm in actual at the gym? But I feel so good when I leave there. I feel so ready for the next task. So I take that time to take care of myself. Obviously, any specific um, bills and 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 personal um, accounting for my life and my livelihood and my lifestyle is a top priority. So I also prioritize that. You know, it's not just about work and um, making money, but how I'm managing my life and my livelihood. You know, I have I'm a homeowner. I have tenants that I manage. I have a number of things beyond my career in the music industry and my mentorship and me as a mother. So it's a well-rounded, homogenous lifestyle that all intersects that um, I'm balancing. And I'm proud to because, like I said, I'm prioritizing my wellness and my health first in order to be capable to do those things. Strong foundation. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. How about you, PJ? Uh, I have to second what Candace says. You know, family's the, the foundation. It's the platform that I stand on that allows me to do everything that I do. So as long as I'm right with the family and we're good at home, I can step out into the world and know that, you know, I can approach it with a clear head and a clear mind. And that kind of helps everything that I'm doing. You know, a lot of times we find ourselves in this rut and we don't realize that it, it's it's stemming from our personal relationships. Our creative, our creative blockage is stemming from our personal blockages, right? So as long as you have stuff right within your community or your household or your friend group or whatever it is that you hold close to you for inspiration i feel like the rest of the world will get the best part of you you know yeah. so and you know in this industry it's always best to lead with your best foot forward and you know have that positive energy so but then it also ties into me for community a lot too because um 
I not only I not only represent myself, but I also represent my community. So I'm Native American. I represent the Yoeme people. Um, I'm gonna address you guys. Uh, Leo Simchemanyavu and El Po PJ Vegas. My name is PJ Vegas. I represent the Yoeme people. So everything I do kind of shadows upon um, being one of the first people from my area to kind of step into this role of uh, being someone that actually has a position in music and doing well. So um, provide a lot of inspiration for my people and a lot of uh, opportunities. I try to help any way I can. So it's really just locking down that household and then being able to push that good energy out to the community and just keep it moving, keep it rolling. And you said you have a two-year-old. Do you just have one? I do, yeah. It's my first It's my first kid, so that's a learning experience on its own as well. And what's their name? If His you're name is Antonio, sharing. but we call him Neo. Huh. Yeah, yeah. He's a... Uh, He's a little wild one, but he, he, he keeps me inspired. You know what I mean? When I look at him and I, and I realize that, like, okay, this little guy's watching everything I'm doing, it makes me want to hustle ten times harder. It's pretty amazing how much kids force you to be present, too, exactly. right? Like, yeah. when yeah. you're with a toddler, there's no, there's no oh, hold on it. a minute. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 I really wish there were more things in the music industry that acknowledge families on a multi-generational level. Like, not only people with kids, there's so many people I know that are in the industry that would love to take their parents to things. And not that many, um, there's not that many offerings. Uh, Michelle, I know Sona has done that before, because I went. You went. To the picnic. The, pe the picnic family yes. day. That was so much fun. Talk about, you know, what you see with balancing. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. So. So when I had my son, I was in the middle of really kind of grinding as, you know, really hustling as a, as a songwriter. You know, the job of songwriter is is hard. Um, you have to be sort of ready to run to a session, um, stay as long as the artist and the producers want to stay. Um, you know, it's not just the writing of the songs, but then the pitching and all that stuff. It is such a full body, full time job. And having a newborn mm. does not go well. Um, I, you probably don't need to have this image, but I have this very strong memory of like pumping in the bathroom of Chalice mm. and crying. Yeah. Like, like it was hard. Like it's really hard. It's hard anyway. And then with a a, a young, you know, a a baby, it's even harder. So I think there needed. To, like I knew at the time. I wasn't the only one doing it, but I felt like I was. And there was nothing around. This was 2008, um, 2007, 2008. So there was nothing around that I could find that was a community that people I could ask. I, I had friends who, you know, were also songwriters, but like a lot of them didn't have kids or they had kids later. Um, and, you know, the advice I got at the time was power through. And... And you start to think it's you, it's not, it's you, you're the problem. It's not, but it's not, it's not you. It's the problem is that we're in an industry that doesn't have, we don't have a union, we don't have an HR department. You know, if you're creative in the industry, you're, you're kind of on your own kid and, um, and you know, health insurance and child care and all that stuff is, is just, it's not a thing. So, so you are in sort of a perfect storm of, of, of. On, of disadvantage, right? Just from the start. Um, so you have to, so it's, so I guess I want to say that is that it's not you. Like mm. if you are sort of struggling with new parenthood or parenthood in general, it's, you're, it's not set up to help. It's not set up to be supportive. You have to sort of find your people, find your community and ask for help. Like really seek seek the help it, it's not a failure or a deficiency on your part that that you're struggling so and I didn't I don't think I knew that or got that at the time so then you know I I built the thing that I didn't see mm. with with my organization with Sona I didn't see a community for support so I went to my women friends you know um many of them um who are also songwriters and we created it's not a it's sona is not for women but it ended up being kind of a vampire it ended up being kind of women who started it because we had similar schedules we had similar experiences and we created a community for songwriters who happen to also be parents or not parents, you know who have lives you know that weren't just about hustling for the next song and and i would encourage that for anyone who is 
at that point, like know that it's not you know that there's, you can ask for help and know that, you know, if you don't see a community that reflects what you need from it, start it, create it. That's really powerful. Uh, do you want to do a kid shout out? Uh, my son, Jackson. And how old is Jackson? He's 17. 17. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to ask a question selfishly because uh, from the outside looking in, someone like Orly to me seems like she has it together. Like absolutely together. Like Orly, everything is always fresh pressed. She is an amazing mom. She's doing global movie releases, traveling from Jamaica to Japan. And, you know, I see you talking about all the amazing plans you made during the pandemic. And one of the areas I know I struggle as a mom, shout out to Ivory, Ruby, and West, is um, is you can make all the plans. And I think every single person in this room is a hard worker. But what do you do when life throws you curveballs, the lifestyle distractions? Like, I'll give you an example. This week, um, Monday, I got a call, not once, but twice from the nurse's office because my middle child had a wiggly tooth. <laughs> I was like, is this worth a <laughs> call? It's going to fall out. <laughs> you know, how do you deal with it? Whether it's kids being sick or, you know, life curveballs, work curveballs. How do you manage that? Um it's interesting that we're talking with someone that works with neurodivergent uh, musicians because also, you know, I have four kids of my own and um, my second is this like incredible soul who's definitely been here before. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, one morning we were like rushing. I, I have trying to get four kids out of the house or three kids at the time out of the house and go to the office and blah, and he had two different color socks on mm -hmm. and I was like get back in your room and go put the right socks on and he looked at me and he was like is it really important mom mm. and I will never forget that he is now 17 still challenges me every day mm. um, because you know, that's what kids do. And that's what life does. Even if you don't have kids, you know, shit happens. Like you, sh you show up to a construction site and they're building this recording studio and there's plans upon plans and, and everyone knows what they're doing and you show up and there's like a wall in the wrong area. Like it just happens. Things happen. So how do you deal with that? And how do you move forward? And I always think about Gideon because he always sort of checks me, like, is it really that bad? Like, maybe there's a reason why this wall is here. I don't know. Like, let's regroup and really, okay, sometimes it's a mistake and we got to take it down. <laughs> Can you tell I'm in construction? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, or sometimes you just, you just say, okay, you're wearing two color socks. You're going to school. People may judge me, but that's okay. Right? Yeah. So, like... I think life is like uh, Bruce Lee, I think I said, like, be like water. So, like, I hmm. talk about this all the time to myself when, you know, things are happening. There is mold in a unit. There is, you know, a uh, song that wasn't registered properly or photos that were taken that we've purchased for my father-in-law. And somehow they weren't, like, registered properly. So, like, you have to really just learn how to pivot. You have to learn how to adjust. And most importantly, as we're talking about mental health, stress is such an important thing for us to think about managing in our life. Every single day, you need to think about what are you doing for yourself today? How are you showing up for yourself? And how are you minimizing the stress in your life. We all have stress. You know, my husband always says, every man thinks their burden is the heaviest. And it is true. Your stress may be the biggest thing you've ever carried. So you need to give yourself some grace and think about yourself every day. And how do we minimize the stress? How do we minimize the trauma in our day so that we can be 
productive and we can show up and we can be not just sustain, but actually thrive, you know? Yeah. I can't believe I had so many questions. I wanted to talk more about asking for help. Michelle mentioned that. I wanted to deep dive on um, maternity, paternity leave, foster care. Um, and I already found out we're running tight on time. So I think that there are so many unbelievable people on our panel that not only are powerhouses, but they're really taking care of communities. I look at every single one of you and the work that you're doing, I guess, um, as we wrap up, um, what's one thing you would like to offer to people watching, you know, as we talk about wellness and music and thriving, um, I guess what's one final thing you want to leave people with? Um, I, and this ties into the, the previous question that you asked. Um, one thing that I, I don't play about is my Sabbath, mm -hmm. uh, day. I have two of them actually in the week. Um, there are two days in the week where it doesn't matter if something's burning down. Don't call me and I'll, tomorrow I'll come back and sweep up the ashes. Mm. That's Friday and Sunday. Friday for me is my one day that I do not work. Um, I sometimes work. I'm just joking. Uh, I generally don't work. Um, and I, my phone is on do not disturb all day. I mean, this only works because I'm not a parent yet. So when that does happen... Fingers crossed. Um, I will readjust then. But for right now, um, as a single, un, as, a, as an unmarried, um, un, non-mother just yet, um, the my Sabbath is really, really important. And then on Sundays are my days, my day of worship. And so that's a day that I not only take time to rest, but I also take time to just pour back into um, myself spiritually, which I think is not everyone has a spiritual uh, belief, which is fine. But I, for me, that's super duper important. My faith is really, really important to the way that I operate professionally, personally, and just, you know, in the world. So my Sabbath on Friday for my rest and then on Sundays for my worship. That's great, really um, blocking out those times. Uh, Orly, you just gave some really good advice. Anything else you want to add? Um, I just really think prioritize yourself, you know, because they always talk about putting the mask on yourself or if, you, if your cupboard is not full, you have nothing to give yeah. to your children, to your employees to your parents you know I have a 94 year old grandmother I have parents that are aging so there is you know I have siblings so every person in your life takes a little bit out of you but if your cup isn't full if you your cupboard isn't full if you don't have the oxygen mask on for yourself you have nothing to give you're parched don't be parched don't be parched yeah don't be parched my turn yep um I just want to double down on what Michelle shared. We need each other. We need each other in order to make this world go round, to build community, to gain solace, empathy, compassion, support, in order to move the needle forward. People before us needed each other, and that's how they were able to establish the foundations that we are now standing up on. So let's continue to collaborate, build community, and lean in with each other because there's nothing that can be done individually. So I'll leave you guys with that. Love that. Uh, so for me, it would just be just keep on keeping on. Um, show up every day. Um, a thousand doors will get closed in your face, but a thousand more will open. You just have to keep it going and just know that you've been able to find your passion, find your purpose, and then hopefully make a career out of it. So if you've been able to do that and been able to forge that path for yourself, you're almost there. So just keep going and don't give up. And for me, I would say... Let yourself off the hook. Be kind. Um, bend at the knees when you pick something up. Drink plenty of water. And, um, and seriously, ask for help. Yeah. Well, and I'm so excited that we're all here today and we're connected and that we are going to show this digitally. So if people have more questions, um, aside from the few we're going to do in the room, I, I know every single person on this panel would be more than happy if you reach out and want to carry on the conversation. Um, Michelle, do you mind passing the mic? We have a Grammy U student who has a question. Could you please introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, my name is Esther and I am Grammy U student. Um, a good question I had is during your busy schedule, how do you make time for family time? 
More family time. <laughs> my favorite uh, Ziggy Marley album. Uh, I'm gonna just. It was too easy. Go ahead. Uh, this. I, I will say this. Um, I feel like tradition is really important in every culture. Um, you know, whether you're Christian or Catholic or Jewish, whatever it is, like whether you don't even like have spirituality, it doesn't matter. Just have a tradition. Like for us, our family, Friday nights are non-negotiable. So like there is always grumblings from the peanut gallery. Like I got a game. I don't care. Friday night dinner. We're having Shabbat. I'm making dinner or my mom's cooking and you're staying home. Like, that's it. Bring your friends. Invite your friends. We have people of all generations. It doesn't matter. Come come to my house. Like, so try to create traditions, whether it's Shabbat, whether it's Sunday where you worship, like create experiences for your family and for yourself that are that stay ingrained within you. And I feel like that is whatever it is. It could yeah. be a Monday night, Tuesday taco night, whatever. Like something that you do together as a family or something that you do with yourself that is a tradition, I think is like really what what has helped us. Yeah, one of the best piece of, pieces of advice I ever got is you have to schedule things in you want to do because there's always going to be things to do. So creating those rituals is powerful. Um, do we have time slash interest for another question? Um, directing people to the mic. So, yeah. Okay. Um, as far as other questions, uh, Kristen, I know you were saying, uh, we were talking on the way over here, you have a lot of experience based on the work you've even done with Kaiser. Do you have any uh, questions about? And if you want to uh, stand, introduce yourself, and then ask your question. Just yes. Great. Yeah. Hi. So, yeah, I'm Kristen Jewell. Thank you, Julie. I am a former, a lifetime former uh, executive at Kaiser Permanente, which is a healthcare company in Los Angeles, but also uh, we have a presence nationally. Um, I actually established in 2005 the music programs for Kaiser using music as an engagement strategy, built the business case for it, and then leveraged that into uh, managing artists and independent artists now. So I'm really proud of that work. I think maybe if I were going to ask you anything, what inspires you as far as when you think of thriving in a musical sense, like what is something that you feel the most musical, like oriented for thrive? What does that actually look like when you guys are doing it? Uh, it's something that goes with the flow of the part of life that you're in now. So you kind of, it's like all, I guess a lot of industry, like a lot of businesses are like set yourself up for success, right? Like, so when I had a kid and my schedule changed, I ended up, and it wasn't just ended up, it wasn't just luck. I worked towards it, but I ended up working um, in children's television, writing music for children's television, because that A, was something I was thinking and about and inspired to do, had the schedule for, and it pays. So, so I pivoted to a kind of music creation that suited the place that I was in in my life and it flowed I ended up winning Emmys getting a Peabody doing all this stuff for shows again that didn't that I, that we created to fill a need that we did uh, to fill a, a gap a vacuum that we didn't see there were no you know kid doctors uh who are girls in 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 children's television I worked on Vampirina I worked on uh the Loud House, which had its first um, uh, LGBTQ character, I, I, I feel like we create things that we want to see, and that, um, and I feel like when I got, stepped into that flow of where I was in my life, I was able to run. That's great. So to, go, go ahead. Answer. Um, so one of my favorite titles at the moment is Auntie. I'm an auntie to two nieces and one on the one nephew on the way. Um, hi, uh, Lolo. Uh, <laughs> hi, Noel, and hi, Royce. Um, so one thing that to answer your question, Kristen, um, one thing that I love and which also ties into the previous question is 
Um, my, my nieces, they love music. They love, like, I'm a piano. That's, like, the, their new thing right now. Um, and so, like, my, my younger niece was one. Like, when, whenever it comes on, like, she just starts, she has, like, her thing where she puts her hand behind her back. That's, that's her, like, her dance. And so that, for me, is where, like, it's very funny. Um, and for me, that's where, that's what music and thriving look like to me is when it's actually impacting someone and it's bringing the family together. So it, dancing is a big thing in my, in my, in my house. So my, my mom starts dancing. I start dancing, you know, Noel starts dancing. Lolo's acting shy, doesn't want to dance, but she really dances later, you know? And, you know, and so, um, music really, really brings, at least in my family, it brings us together and we dance and we celebrate using music. And that's one way that I'm able to also balance family as well as like by using music as a way for us to spend time together. Uh, I think we'll close out. It's so important that we do have these communities and networks. One way just to support each other in 15 seconds or less. How can we support you? I'm going to say um, creatives get involved in conversations in tech because we need to have ownership of our future. So, you know, shout out FYI.ai. Join the movement. Absolutely. Um, and support neurodivergent musicians. Um, there, there, we need to have space, um, space and grace created for people who need additional support in this music industry. So that's my, that's my, uh, the way to support will be, you know, support jazz hands, you know, donate, uh, provide opportunities for the musicians that we support, but ultimately support neurodivergent musicians. Orly. I guess support independent artists. Mm -hmm. That to me is really important. Any independent artist, creators, business, everything, and anyone that's doing things independently, I think supporting that would be really helpful. I have this one. <laughs> I would say support the next generation. Um, they are the future leaders. They are the ones who are going to be impacting us as we continue to grow. I'd say support um, authenticity and um, correct representation for all walks of life and all cultures and all people within music. I feel like um, a lot of times, a lot of us get boxed in or pigeonholed into certain areas or certain genres or certain things. And I just feel like if we had more of a proper representation of who we are as people, where we come from, that we'd all be able to really level out and find common ground and really be able to collaborate like better than we've ever had before. Yeah. Well, to echo what you said, I will say pay for music, uh, pay for creativity, support that. And then, of course, join the Recording Academy. <laughs> they are really... <laughs> And so, look, we created Sona to create a community, and I think the Recording Academy is a, a, a an umbrella community, an even bigger community of of creators and creatives and the people that love us, um, and has has done incredible work in in moving the needle and providing a home for for people like us. about to cry just kidding but i am this is probably well they're all my favorite panels but you're my favorite panel of this hour does that work okay good 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 so i just want to say in closing i hope you've enjoyed the panel today everyone good good and I, uh, I hope it was insightful and inspirational. Of course, let's continue to support each other, as was mentioned in all of the ways and then some that you can even think of. Um, and let's continue to support this program, Conversations, Grammys, Bridges, The Gaps. So a big thank you to our amazing moderator, Julie Pilot. <laughs> and additionally, our other panelists, we have Ifunania Nuake, Orly Marley, Candice Newman, PJ Vegas and Michelle Lewis. So again, a big thank you to Volume Studios, um, who has been a great support to our community at the Recording Academy for allowing us to have this program in this wonderful space. And I want to shout out particularly our DEI department, as I did initially, but some of the communities that were represented on the panel today um, include our Women in the Mix community, include our Songwriters and Composers Wing community, include our Black Music Collective community, include our Indigenous Peoples Network community, um, also includes our Career Musica community, as well as um, uh, the other networks, oh, and RAD, the Recording Academy Accessibility and Disability community. These are some of the newer networks, a part of the Dream Network. In addition to that, we have the Gold Music Alliance, 
And then we also have, I'm missing one community. Oh, Academy Proud. Hello, June, Pride Month. So we just want to shout out those amazing communities that are being built right here within our membership. And of course, the uh, sister organizations in Music Hairs, the Grammy Museum Foundation, and the Latin Recording Academy. Um, it's it's a great display, even in this conversation and within this panel of all of the work we are doing around community. So a big thank you and a shout out to all of those organizations. Hope you guys had a great day. Thank you. Thank you.